In this video, I'll show you how to implement your first Java Spring Boot microservice. Hi, it's Stefan from Deep Data Ocean, where we help you getting rid of your legacy software or your software monolith. When you're new here, make sure to click the subscribe button and all the links to everything I mentioned in the video are in the video description below. In case you will still have questions after the video, please leave me a comment below. I'm happy to help. And if you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. That does make a difference. So let's jump into it. This is the first video of my Java Spring Boot series. So if you're interested in Java Spring Boot, make sure to watch the other parts. Maybe you are working as a developer for a software monolith. Many companies want to migrate to a distributed microservice-oriented architecture. Unfortunately, you don't know how to do that since you never did it. Well, in this video, we'll create a first Java Spring Boot microservice for customers. I was really struggling to find a good example, so please let me know in the comments below what kind of microservice did you already develop or do you want to develop? We will create REST API endpoints for the creation, for the update, for reading and for deleting customers. After that, we will see how you can test the REST API endpoints. At the end of the bonus, I will share bonus with you. So your first Java Spring Boot microservice will run on the port 8080 since this is the standard port for the embedded Tomcat server. Once you are creating your second microservice, you want to run both on your notebook so that you can Test them together. For this, you need to change your port to maybe 8081. We will do exactly this at the end of the video, so make sure to stick to the end. Let me now start showing you the Java code of the Java Spring Boot microservice of the customer. So, we are using Maven as the build tool, so let me start running you through the POM XML. So, here we are having the parent entry which says nothing more than please derive from the Spring Boot starter parent, which basically provides all the libraries for that. Then we're having Java 11, and we're having some dependencies here, which is Spring, Fra Spring Framework Boot, and there we have the Spring Boot starter web and the Spring Boot starter test. And another one for log4j and the Maven plugin. That's basically it. So let us now look into the custom application. The most important one here is the Spring Boot application. This just tells Java and the Spring Boot framework that this is the first class and that it basically shall do all the magic like starting a Tomcat application, providing all the REST endpoints and all just getting the infrastructure set up. Then we have the controller and here we're defining all the REST API endpoints. So we're using Java Spring Boot in order to be able to access REST APIs, maybe using Postman like we do it later on. But here we're just saying whenever our Tomcat server gets hit by a POST request on the endpoint create customer, <clears throat> then please execute this guy. The same for the get mapping, so when we're having a get request on the airport get all customers, this will be started. For the update customer, we're using the put, and for the delete customer, obviously the delete request. So let us now check what is a customer. So this is our customer data transfer object, which has nothing more than all the attributes and the getters and setters. A bit boring, but still. Then we're having the service, which just says we want to get four endpoints exposed, which is the create customer, get customer, update customer, delete customer. And here we're having the implementation. So for the create customer, we will just get the customer DTO by Spring Boot Magic. So we just have to create the customer object. We are setting all the 
um, attributes here and then we're just adding it to a list. So in this example microservice, we don't do any persistence in the database yet, just putting it to a list. Then we have another one, the get customer, which just um, returns all customers. The update customer for changing attributes of existing customers. And finally, the delete customer. We will now start the Java Spring Boot microservice and check how we can use Postman to access the REST API endpoints. So I'm clicking on custom application and just run this application main. We are seeing now Tomcat initialized with port 8080. It's trying to start the service, the Tomcat, and here we got the message saying now it's up and running. This guy here. So let us now use Postman to create a first customer. So for create, we're using the post method. And then we are just telling Postman which body to use. So we want to have a raw body of JSON. And we're pasting here the JSON format of our customer, which is just the, the body of the request that will be sent to our REST API. And this will be again our server on localhost, the port was 8080 and we are calling the endpoint create customer. Let me now hit send and I'm getting the message customer added successfully. Let us maybe check this by using the get to all customers. So here I'm getting my customer back, but you know what? It's Mr. Anders in Broadway one in New York and it's in Germany, which is obviously bullshit. So let us use the update um, REST API endpoint to get this fixed. So we're doing this using a put request and we have to provide again the JSON but this time we're having the country USA. Let me send this. It tells me the update was successful. Let us check that. Whether all looks good here. So let us call again the get all customers endpoint. Now we are seeing USA. And finally, get us rid of this guy by deleting it. So here I'm executing a delete request on the endpoint delete customers for the ID zero. And when I'm sending this, it says me the guy got deleted. Let us again check that. and we are getting back an empty array. In the beginning, I've promised you a bonus. We will now change the application to use port 8081 so that port 8080 stays free for the second microservice. So let me now open the application properties and paste in server.port equals 8081 and let me start the microservice. Now it says Tomcat initialized with port 8081 and it's started on 8081. Let us check this quickly. So when I'm using the old one for the 8080, I'm getting now back an error message saying, well, I could, couldn't send the request. And when I'm 
Now changing this to 8081. We're getting again the empty result back, which basically means we're using the same stuff, but running on port 8081 so that we can use a different one, a different microservice on port 8080. I am very curious which microservice you want to develop next. So please leave me a comment below, I'd love to hear. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, that does make a difference. And subscribe to the channel so that you get notified for all the new videos. And you can also see the next video right here.